Hello, welcome back to Fairview. We are so glad you're here. There's a few things we want to go over to be sure you can be as safe as possible while you're here and to be sure you can enjoy your time here and that we can all continue to learn together. Um, the first thing, of course, we need to talk about is safety. So um, let's go over the guidelines of what we'll expect. The first expectation is that you wear your mask at all times. All right, eating is the exception to this, clearly. Most of the rest of the time, you'll be wearing your mask. There might be times when we go outside together and we'll specifically tell you you can take off your mask, but we will tell you if, unless you hear otherwise, you need to be wearing your mask until it's time to eat. And then when you finish eating, of course, you'd put it back on. You need to stay seated at all times. This is a little different. Usually, you've been allowed to get up and walk and throw something away or uh, sharpen a pencil. You, this year you must stay seated unless you have permission to be out of your seat because we're trying to keep space between you and other people. That relates to number three, social distance. We need you to social distance. You need to stay six feet from other people at all times unless you're told differently. Um, there are times when we can make an exception to that and we'll tell you those times. You will be glad to know you do get the chance sometimes to work with other people. We want that to happen as much as possible, uh, but it has to be for a very limited amount of times in very controlled circumstances. So your assumption needs to be that you stay at least six feet from other people. You also need to be careful to not touch others or their belongings. That's a strange thing to tell you not to share, but that's important. You need to use only your own belongings or only belongings that we've given to you and then sanitized. Uh, and then we'll sanitize when we take them back or that we've sanitized before we give them to you. Um, which also you need to sanitize your hands when you touch any common surface. If there's something, you know, if you're at a table where someone else was, then you need to san ha sanitize your hands as soon as you leave there or any other reason if you touch a common surface for any other reason. And as always, you cough and sneeze into your elbow. Um, if, and this should always be true too, if you are feeling sick, you need to say something to an adult. It's especially important now. All right, let us know if you feel badly or if you feel bad. <clears throat> okay, everyday materials. You must have the following materials with you every day when you're at school in person. Uh, a clean mask. You always have to have a clean mask. Now we do have, we can provide a couple of masks to each of you if we need to. Um, or at least one mask. I'm not sure how many we have left, but I think we could provide a mask to everyone if you need it. Uh, you need a water bottle because we're not drinking out of the water fountain. You need your fully charged computer and your computer charger. I'll say more about that in a little while. Earbuds and or headphones. You'll have to use these frequently in the day. You need to have some earbuds. They can be the cheap ones you get at Dollar Store. That's, those are perfectly acceptable. Um, but you need to have them with you every day. You need all four of your composition books, the ones for all four classes. You'll use those um, in some of your classes. You'll use them every day and maybe in all four classes. I'm not sure. You need your pencils and your colored pencils. You'll get a, a chance to do quite a bit with them. And we recommend, of course, that you use a backpack or a cinch bag because that's a fair bit to carry there and it's much easier if you have something you can put it in. Cell phones, this is the same thing as it's always been. It includes all personal devices that connect to the internet, watches, anything else. Um, and as always, they must be turned off completely at all times, kept in your backpack, not in your pockets. And if your personal device is not turned off and in your backpack, teachers will confiscate them and turn them into the office where they can only be picked up by an adult. You know that. This is just a reminder. Using the restroom, this is a little different. Only one girl and one boy from a classroom may go to the restroom at a time. Only two students may be in a restroom at a time. So if you go and two people are already inside the restroom, say you're the only girl from your classroom, but you get there and there's already two girls in the restroom, you need to wait outside in the hallway on the red X. We call that being on deck. There can only be one person on deck. If you go and somebody's already waiting outside your restroom on deck, 
them come back directly to the classroom and try again in a moment. If there's someone on deck, then that obviously means there's two people in that restroom, and you'll just have to wait a little while. Wash your hands with soap for 20 seconds. You know, that's as long as the happy birthday song or the alphabet song. And sanitize your hands when you return to the classroom. Okay, we will not use a restroom pass or sign out for now. Um, that's also different than the past. All right, hallway behavior. You can see right there the red X for staying on deck beside the bathroom there. There's also arrows painted all around, I mean, taped to the hallway that you've probably noticed by now. Um, these are guidelines you would follow, but we're, you need to be more aware of them this year. Stay to the right. Stay six feet apart. Now that one's different. Uh, so when you're walking to the cafeteria, you're not going to walk right beside your friend. Instead, you're walking six feet behind. And you're walking and talk only in a low voice. Those are, that's how, that's ordinary ball, ha hallway behavior. And go directly to your destination and come straight back. You can't take, uh, visit people along the way or take any side routes. Go right where you're going and come right back. This is, quite different. Do not use the water fountain. We don't have a way of ensuring your safety if you do that. That's why you need a water bottle because you can use the bottle filler but you can't drink out of the water fountain. So you must have a water bottle when you come to school because it's too long to go all day long without drinking any water. Um, a disposable water bottle that you can refill is just fine but you need to have something so you can drink. Uh, not changing classes, that's different. We'll stay in this classroom most of the day. Your other teachers will meet you here. We have, have been given permission for um, teachers to sometimes take you to, like Ms. Ailing, to take you to the art room, Mr. Smith to music, Ms. Green to the library. That's brand new starting today, so we're very excited about that, but you're going to have to follow their guidelines. Most of the day you'll be in this classroom. You also will be taken outside for PE. Uh, you'll eat breakfast and lunch in the classroom. It's free, by the way, for all students this year, so feel free to eat breakfast and lunch every single day from the school because you don't have to pay for it. That's pretty exciting. We will keep the classroom clean and sanitized. We're cleaning these tables four times each day, all right, so with, with special cleaner. So we're doing our very best to keep this as clean and safe as possible. Car riders are going to get dismissed from the pod when their name is called. It makes no sense for everyone to gather in the administration pod, so you'll just stay at your um, table in your classroom and you'll leave when your name gets called. Okay, so your table. I just mentioned you'll stay at your table. You have a table assigned to you or, or you get to choose in lots of cases as well, but you need to stay at that table. In most of the classrooms, you're the only one at the table. Uh, well, there are some exceptions. Sometimes there might be two of you at a table on, um, far apart at the table. So you need to keep six feet between you and others. Um, to do this, you need to stay in the center of your table. All right, you need to stay scooted in with your belly close to the table. You need to keep your knees under the table, facing towards the front. And you need to not lean back or tip your chair because that puts you into other people's spaces. Of course, if you are sharing a table with someone else, um, you need to be as far away from the other person at the table as you can be. These are ordinary school guidelines that you've seen all along. One person talking at a time. All right. And show the speaker that you're listening by facing toward them, leaving your belongings alone, and being quiet. Raise your hand and wait for the teacher to call on you if you want to speak during a discussion. Blurting out is like cutting in a line in a discussion. Don't be that person who does that. Don't blurt out. Do not talk while your teachers are talking. That's pretty obvious. The give me five signal. Um, when a teacher does this, raises their hand, uh, they might say give me five. Sometimes they'll just raise their hand. Usually we'll say give me five. When that happens, you also need to raise your hand up high. Second thing is you need to be silent. Third thing is make sure both your hands have been emptied, that you don't have anything in your hands. Keep your eyes on the teacher and stop moving. Lots of times your friends won't notice that this is happening. Teachers will sometimes count down from five. 
quietly help other people spot the signal because sometimes maybe they were busy talking and they didn't see it. So just help them see it. Both of these things about talking one person at a time and respecting Give Me Five, it's just a way of having a respectful classroom so we can all enjoy being together and learn as much as possible without being disrespectful to each other. Volume codes help us do the same thing. You know these, I believe. Um, code zero means you're silent. One, you're whispering and partners. And since we have started being allowing you to sit with someone else for a short period of time to work on something, you will have the chance sometimes to whisper with a partner. Code two is a very low voice. This would be people right next to your table or in some cases at your table. Code three would be a normal voice where the classroom could hear you. Just our classroom, of course. We are in a pod and we have to respect that. Um, your computer, this is very important. You need to take care of it. You're responsible for it. Always bring it to school fully charged. When you go to bed at night, plug in your computer and leave it charging that night. <clears throat> Always bring your charger to school just in case. Because sometimes things happen and you think it's charged, but it's not. So always bring your charger. In class, clearly, it's important that you only visit websites that your teacher sends you to. No surfing the web. And nothing you do on your school computer is private. This actually applies when those computers, when you're at home with your computers too. Uh, these are, this is, these are educational tools, and so. You need to know that what's there is not private. Teachers can see what you're doing. The county, the people at the county office can see what you're doing. Use it as an educational tool. Can you do things um, that you just enjoy at home? Sure, if you want to play Minecraft at home or some, something like that, that's fine. Just keep in mind that what you do there is not private. Yellow and red cards. I don't anticipate having to use a lot of these, but just in case, a yellow card means it's about to get real serious, real serious. It's still just a warning, but this means we have verbally warned you of something um, and you're con continuing to do it. Or perhaps it means that what you did, you, we, you have very clear understanding that you shouldn't have. And so you receive a, a yellow card. We'll <clears throat> write the appropriate information on here and we keep these on file. Now, sometimes things are very serious immediately or you ignore the yellow card, and then it becomes a red card, which means it just got real serious. Teachers keep count, which means we keep these on file, and it would mean a telephone call home. So let's have a really great year together. We think that you will discover sixth grade teachers are easy to get along with, as long as you do what we ask, when we ask, follow our instructions, and do your work. It makes it so much nicer for you to keep up with your work. Two, be sure you're not disrespectful to others, students and teachers. We take this very, very seriously. You need to be respectful to one another. That's an important life skill. Do not interfere with our ability to teach the class. Do not disrupt any other students' learning in this classroom and those around us. And keep a positive attitude. Sometimes things get a little frustrating, but if you keep a positive attitude, it's easy to work through those frustrations. We've been having a really good time here at school for the weeks that we have been here. We're glad you're here with us face to face, and we look forward to things going really well for you. Welcome and enjoy yourself.